Hi everyone. So we're just gonna wait a few minutes before we get started. I am going to be looking at um, the group via my phone to make sure I get all of the notifications um, for, for any questions that might pop up. So make sure. I'm so glad everybody was here. And if you're watching the replay, um, make sure to post your questions as well, um, just so that I can uh, take a look at them and uh, answer them when I get a chance. Right. So I can see that the live is to post online your questions on as well, my phone. Um, just so that I can Let's see. Uh, okay. All right, I believe I can comment. Let's test the comments. Okay. So yeah, if you have any comments or anything, or if you just want to say hi, let me know. If you have any questions, I'm watching it on my phone. And um, I'm just going to get started um, because it was requested that I kind of go over a um, the very beginning stages of d creating your MailChimp page or your account. And then I'll go into an, a brief overview on how to create a landing page that you can actually use in the meantime, while you're creating your website, you can always use this landing page um, as a, as a platform to market yourself and get those emails rolling in so that you're not just starting off, uh, completely on a blank slate when you actually launch, when you launch your business officially. So this, I just created a test uh, MailChimp uh, account. So it's completely new. Um, it has no lists in it yet or anything. So all I did was put my name, my email, all of that stuff. Um, so one of the things that, you, the first things that you wanna make sure is that you have a list created so it automatically creates a, a test, a, a list that you can use. Um, I just named it design test and I have one subscriber, which is myself. Um, it automatically adds you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you can import, if you do have an email list currently, um, you can import them or you can manually add them in each one. It might be a bit frustrating to manually add each subscriber, but if you haven't had a chance to have those typed up or anything, this might just be um, a good way to do it. Once you have your landing page created, then you wouldn't have to do it. You can bring up your landing page during an event um, and then have that page ready for people to sign up so that they don't actually have to, you don't actually have to write, every, type everything in after they've written it out on a sheet of paper. <clears throat> Especially if you plan on having a lot of subscribers every time you have an event and you might just want to really <laughs> show them the landing page and, and not have to deal with it. Okay, so let's see here. So there aren't any comments yet. So make sure you comment um, and actually share this. All right, making sure that we can all see that it's live. Okay, all right, so, um, so design test uh, is the list. And if you click on it, what you can see is, again, it's just um, my address, my first name, last name, and then that test email address that I use. Um, it's the first subscriber you I think you have to have a subscriber in there for, for the list to be created and because it automatically always adds whoever the account holders um, email addresses then so there's a couple of ways that you can manage this list um, it, or at least have that landing page there's sign up forms and then there are landing pages which are two different things sign up forms are great if you're going to have let's say an event like I was mentioning earlier. This can also be considered a landing page, but it's great if you're gonna have an event. So you go into the lists, 
I went to sign up forms and literally the, what I'm going to be editing editing is a sign up form. Um, I usually leave this unchecked. This is the link for your sign up forms if you ever want to send it to somebody or if, for example, you want to bookmark it in, on pad or something so that you can are all ready to whip that out and have, some, have people subscribe to your email list. Um, so this is the build it area and let's see this is the hidden stuff um, usually I think this is GDPR stuff um, so we are going to build out our site uh, well our I'm sorry not a site um, our little this is like a mini landing page um, you can edit your content all I did was hit edit and headline goes here and you want to make sure that you highlight it and you actually tell it that it is, let's see, headline. Title. Um, okay. And so you want to make sure that it's, uh, it looks like a headline, it acts like a headline so that, you know, you don't want uh, it to be really, really small text and to kind of be just, um, hidden and lost so save I do recommend though that um, you don't have too much text here um, just mention if you don't have a freebie for your email list all you have to do is type in maybe sign up for the newsletter and then maybe here you can edit it and add add a cool message so this could be you know the type of content that they'll get so for me it could be, you know, a robust sign newsletter, and then it'll be you'll get tips and tricks for your to level up your website, and then it's just email first name last name. So you don't want to clutter this up here. Um, then the rest of this you can now there's you can use the first name last name. I find that it, if it takes too long for people to fill in their information, sometimes they drop off. So really, the main thing you want is the email address. So go in and um, you you can go in and just have the email address you don't necessarily need to have the first name last name and in one way to get rid of those is just to subtract and it'll be gone I uh, first name is good you don't really need last name depending on how you're using the form if you're using it more as an intake form then you might want to add something like a phone number address things like that um, but usually I haven't really seen if it's a form you might you might want to use a different format to create it um, such as type form or if you're on Squarespace you can use Squarespace forms and it'll automatically send you all the information since it's not they're not really subscribing they're just filling out a form um, yeah so this is kind of how you build it um, this stuff it's hidden birthday, subscribe to list. Now the fun stuff is where you get to design it. So if you already have your color codes for your brand, um, this, is, this would be perfect for you because then you can just go in and edit the background. Background, I suggest white or gray, unless you your brand calls for a very dark background, then maybe a black. Um, the body is this area here, so it is the white. Right now it is set to white. And all you do is click here and switch it out so you can change the color of it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, this gray background can be mostly any color as long as this section here is still readable. This area here definitely has to be easy to read. You don't want to be dinged by having it be not user friendly, where where people have to squint and try to really um, blow up the the thing the form just to be able to read it. So you want to make sure. And the highest contrast is black uh, is black text on white. So if you want to keep it black text on white, that's great. One way to add a little bit of let's go back. <clears throat> One way to add your your um, sorry your branding to this 
is by going to things like the buttons and adding your brand color to it. Um, again, making sure that it's easy to read. So if you make it red, you definitely don't want to um, to go ahead and and have the text be magenta or something. Um, make sure that the text and everything is easy to read. So for example, if you're really into a soft pink and you want your white text, which means it's clean, that's just gonna be really hard to read. Let's see. Um, if you have any questions, again, um, I know that there's a couple of people watching this live. If you have any questions, um, make sure to put them in the comments and I can tackle those. Right now we're just going over the sign up form and then we're going to go over the landing page because it's two ways of having a landing page for your, instead of a site um, or while you're building your website. So this, so just make sure you put any questions in. Um, I mean, this sign up page is pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, this is just a testing account, so it's free. So Monkey Rewards is just this item here. You can't really get rid of it if you're on the free one, but you can at least tell it where to go. Uh, let's see. So another thing um, you might want to think about for your um, for your lists. Let's see here. Is to click onto the list and settings, and then go to. And this is more so if you're going to be collecting emails from. Um, Hi, I'm here. I'll watch the replay too. Thank you for doing this live. Yeah, no problem. If you have any questions before you head off, make sure to put them in, and um, and then I'll when you watch the replay, I I might be able to answer those questions, and you can do follow up questions too. So make sure you post anything you want to know. Um, okay, so where was I? Okay, GDPR. So this is really important. If you're going to be collecting emails, I would suggest doing this whether or not you're collecting emails from people in Europe and stuff. But they, in a summary, they passed a law. You have to tell people what you're using their email address for. Um, and I'm assuming the U.S. is going to follow suit. Um, you can do this in multiple ways, but with MailChimp, you really you just have to make sure that your settings enable GDPR fields here, form settings. Um, here you can also do double opt-in, a recapture. Those depend more on your preference, but I would definitely enable the GDPR fields um, just to keep yourself safe. This is where you can also edit the from name. So for example, if I wanted it to say my business, um, if I wanted it to say whatever else, um, you can definitely do it that way. If you want to be notified every time you get a subscriber one by one, um, I don't really recommend it. But uh, if you do want to be notified, then you can put your email address there. Um, yes, so GDPR. And now we're going to see, and that's going to affect both landing pages as well as sign-up forms. So sign-up form. Form builder. Let's look at our form again. And so you can see here marketing permissions. This is all GDPR stuff. Um, you can edit it by this is what we did. We edited that button color um, to add a little bit of branding to this place, to the section. Um, you can edit this. So, for example, you can add, leave this as is, or you can add your own legal text. Um, you can, let's see, you can take out, for example, maybe you're not going to be doing direct mail, so you can delete that. Um, there's a couple of different things you can add to it, too. Uh, you can require at least one option. Let's see. 
Um, so there's a couple of different things. The description, you can, uh, this, it's this section here. So if you wanted to customize the description, then um, to make it more you, more brand appropriate, uh, you could say something like, I don't even know, I'm not a copywriter, but you could say something like, hey, you know, you won't be receiving a bunch of junk from us. Um, make sure you select the ways that you would love to hear from us. Um, and you can just do that. Um, this will just cover your, you and make to make sure that you're, it's just a nice way to cover yourself if you're collecting emails. Um, so then you've gone in here, let's say you changed this background color, uh, you added a headline, you added a cool message, you took out that last name, but you wanna still keep their first name and email address. You probably don't want, you might not want their address, their address, you can delete that. Right now it was a hidden field. You probably don't want their phone number, you can delete that. Um, I wouldn't suggest a birthday unless you're actually going to use it for something. So, or, you know, if you're a retailer, you can definitely ask for a birthday because you can then market, send them a, an email on their birthday. Um, other than that, for service-based entrepreneurs, I haven't really, unless you really want to do a birthday send, I haven't really, like maybe a, a discount to a course or something, I haven't really found a need for that. So you have your GDPR, so you're covered there. You added this spiffy reddish orange color. Um, for, and then again, it's through the build it, design it. You can add all the colors, um, the button on hover, what it turn, what color it is when it hovers over, what color the field labels are, the text. Uh, if you know that you use a specific type of font, uh, you can change it there. All that good stuff. Then you have this awesome link that you copy and open a new tab. And then here is that page. So um, yeah, people can fill it out and you can get some subscribers going. And then this is just great if you, let's say you don't have a domain name yet, uh, but you're doing some marketing, this is just a good way to do it. Um, now, if you now for the actual landing page, I don't really consider this a landing page. This is a subscribe page, but you can use it. Um, let's go back to our let's see to campaigns. We go to campaigns, and there's no campaigns yet. So we go to create and landing page. So here you would create an email. Here's where you can create an ad. Um, postcards, which is about print stuff, a sign up form, um, and landing page. So we're going to click on landing page, sign test. Uh, so you name it, let's say freebie one, because it's maybe our first freebie that we're doing. We were doing a PDF. Um, then you select a list. You might have multiple lists because you might have different um, events that you've attended or, or and have that people at lists. Or for example, let's say I have a, um, which I do on my site, I have a couple of different freebies. So um, especially back in the day, I used to have a ton of freebies. So I would have a list for the people who um, did the brand quiz and see what brand personality they were. I had another freebie for a few courses. And so I had them all segmented out with which freebie they signed up with. Um, so that's just why we would do the list. You begin, um, accept. Okay, so they do have awesome templates, and then they have your regular ones where you can still add all the cool stuff into it, but you um, you can you can add the cool stuff into these. But if you're kind of worried that you might not be able to um, design it yourself then you can definitely go with one of these. So even as a designer, sometimes if I, if I know for sure that a client, because usually these are add-ons to website projects, so if I know for sure what a client will be promoting and um, using on their landing page and what type of content I have, so like, for example, what type of photography, so if they don't have a lot of photography versus whether if they do have a lot of photography, then I know which one. So for example, this one has big, big, uh, looks like big graphics, Let's peek at it here. 
So see, it has very tall images, um, a couple of testimonials, more images. So if I know for sure that I have the content, such as uh, testimonials and written content, then I know that I could possibly use this for a client. Um, if I don't have a lot of content, here's one where it's more graphic based. Um, when I don't, when I believe I don't have a lot of content, um, I just go for one of these and then add my own stuff to it. So like this one, it asks for a logo, maybe a product image, and then two other images that should be enough. For our client and there's this one a big image headline a product so if they're selling stuff but they don't have the products on actual models or in you know a format that you can see that it in action then this might be fine where it's just a product image here um, so let's pick a template um, let's do hmm this one all right so I picked the template that I wanted to start with and just waiting okay so logo some text um, the uh, sign up section with the GDPR a cool little button and we have another block of text with a headline three sections of text um, two columns and then another two columns to get a quote um, so that's pretty cool. Now, one of the things I will mention, if you're whether you're designing a landing page on your website or on um, on here, this is a really good way of seeing what they've done. So they did two columns with logo, headline. Logo is small because it's secondary. And people already know where they're where you're at, um, they, where they're at. So they've already clicked on a link to get to your landing page. They've uh, met you somewhere. They, they know where they're at. They don't need to be, it doesn't need to be in their face. Then they have uh, a headline and then an email address. Uh, they have wild country. That doesn't really say much to me um, as a person that would want to sign up for it. I would do more of a headline that tells me what I get out of putting my email address in there. Then they have their GDPR stuff. They have a cool subscribe button and it's two columns. Then here they have one column which breaks up that two column monotony. Um, and it's short, it's sweet, and it has a nice short headline. Then to break it up even more, they did three columns. Um, and it's again, text is short, sweet, uh, headlines, everything is easy to read, clear images. Then they went back to two columns. And then this two column is different from this one. So they didn't specifically repeat the same thing. They did two columns with this image, not touching the width of the, the section. And then this one's just here again, headline doesn't really tell me much. And then the MailChimp um, icon. So that's just a nice way. If you ever look at landing pages, that's a nice way of kind of dissecting the layout and how you can prevent your landing page from looking monotonous. So not everything has to be centered. Not everything has to be two columns. You can definitely pattern it out where it's two column, one column, three column, two columns. And then these two are use different treatment for the two columns. So I'm going to add some images. So I clicked on it, um, I edit it. I'm going to replace the image. And I'm going to add some files. Let's see. I can go to my let's go to design library. You guys get to see all my stuff. Um, stock images. Okay. So let's add a few images so that I don't have to do it later. So I drag and drop them. Um, that's a good way of doing it. So 
So pretty much I'm just dragging and dropping files. Um, All right, while those upload, I'm going to look for the logo. <clears throat> oh, find. Okay, so I replaced it with this. Replace the actual logo. All right, so I have the actual logo there. Um, you can see the size of your logo. This is a pretty large image. Um, I would always recommend, unless it's a background image, I recommend um, making sure that it is shrunken down. So because I'm not gonna be using this logo anywhere else, I can edit it and what I'm doing is editing the logo within MailChimp. Um, I usually recommend doing it in, in another program but uh, MailChimp should be fine. Um, it's only a couple of images especially on a website you don't want so for example if you have this ultra large image you don't want to upload it to MailChimp directly or you kind of want to downsize it a little bit. So if you really only need a, a size of uh, the image to be a small square, don't upload a gigantic image that's the size of what a, um, of what a, you know, um, what was it, uh, what a background image would be. Upload it the size uh, that it, you know, the 800 by 800 or whatever size of the square that you need it. So if that makes any sense. Um, okay, so I uploaded that and I am going to, they switch this up on me, let's see. Let me switch this up. Um, so my actual MailChimp account, not this test account, has something slightly different. Um, Let's see. Um, close. Let's see. Or it might not allow me to. But so it's fitting in there. There's this, a way to do to on my account anyway, where you go in and the image gets to be smaller. But um, so we uploaded the logo. They have this. Um, wonderful text. So I deleted that and let's make sure this is this little thing bracket here is for um, to make sure there's no remaining code. Okay, so line goes here. So there it is. And then also, you want to make sure it's a headline. And let's put that. Headline goes here. Um, okay. Then you're going to go in here. So this is actually the form. And you can ask for the first name if you wanted to, um, or email just the email address. You can also tell which one will be required and which one won't be. Uh, the GDPR information, you can make that required button can say subscribe it can say sign up today um, confirmation message is do you want after people have signed up for your for your item let's say you're giving them a free pdf then what do you want them do you want them to be sent to another web page or do you want them to be um, just a thank you message so right now it's just success you've been added to the list as a thank you message but if you wanted to send them to another page so for example Let's say that I wanted, I created on my site a thank you page. And let's say this was the link, my homepage. Um, then I can send them to that specific page. Especially, or you could send them, for example, 
um, yeah, just a thank you page on your site. So if even if the page is not on your navigation, so let's say it's not up here, it's just hidden, then you can you can really market to them. So for example, instead of the home page, I send them to a page that talks specifically about um, you know, thank you so much for signing up. You're going to get your stuff real soon, your freebie really soon. You're going to um, love it so much. Here's a few testimonials. And by the way, it, while you're at it, why don't you sign up for my free strategy session? So you can set, you can use that landing, this URL for that. So that'll help. But if you don't have a website, you can still send them a thank you message that's customized so that they will feel special. Um, again, click here. This is a headline. This is your body text. You can definitely change that out. This here is a space. So it's just a divider, and divider has no color, no background, no, um, and you can edit the, the divider as you want, but it's pretty much just adding space so that it evens itself out uh, between the sections. These three, uh, let's say I want the image, so caption one, two, and three, so you, that's how they build the three column. So I want to replace that image. I go to my images. I'm going to replace it. Now I'm going to insert it. And I believe, yeah, see how it inserts it, that it is not cropped the way I want it to. So if this was my landing page, this would not feel balanced. Um, so you want to go back in there and let's see. Let's make sure, edit. So you want to go back in there and make sure that you're cropping the cropping them all the same way. See, it also exceeds the maximum size. Um, so you want to crop it. Um, let's say I want a square image, which would be the easiest. These would be the easiest because you already know what shape it is. And you can make them all that same shape. Oh, here's my stuff. Okay. So just switching it up. Uh, let's see. Save. Oh, here's the the crop, the uh, resolution stuff. Okay. Then so it's saved. Now it's still pretty large. You can see the pixel widths here. It's pretty huge. So edit. So now it's a square. You just want to keep it the same shape, but we are going to. Here's this. What I was looking for. Um, we're going to make it a little bit smaller, and really, those you don't really need. I would say no more than 500. Um, yeah. I, 100. All right, so they switched this up on me because it is not. I thought this would reduce the size. Let's make sure. Hmm. Actually, why don't we Google it? Um, well, even I get stuck sometimes. All right, let's look at this. Uh, So ultimately, you want to have the size that you know that you're not going to want the 2,000 by uh, 2,000 size here, but that'll have to do for now. Okay, so now let's go click on the other one. Caption, edit. And then I'll just keep this image that they have in here. I'm just going to make it square. See, there's a 658 by 658. Um, if you saw that here, let me show you again. Oops. And I think it's their image, so it might not let me save it. But if you can see... Down here, 658 by 658. So mine, the one I uploaded, is huge because I use, typically use it for background images. Um, so. 
So we're going to go here, uh, and it, you can see what that size is. Um, there's probably a way of doing it. I'll get back to you guys on how to reduce the size of the image without actually um, reducing the crop. But that just gets to be... Nope. Yep, we'll see. All right, so that's how you would do your images. The here, here is where you would get your all of your lovely content. Um, just put it in there. All right, so then we have the two columns. This is pretty much the same thing. It has the image up here and the text down there. And then you have your headline and you have your button. So let's say we wanted to add another button down here, like this is a call to action, maybe. Um, okay. So we edited that and we are going to add, let's see, a button. And so you can edit the styling of a button. Um, you can edit the content, let's say. All right, let me make sure. Shall we? So here it says apply all, I apply to all existing button blocks. You can do this and it'll apply it to every button that you have. So now everything is branded really well. Um, the only difference with the brand is that this is upper and lowercase, and the other one is all uppercase. I would change that just to for consistency's sake. Um, you put your web address in or email address, wherever it is, so it could be contact us, and you can put that down. Um, so yeah, let's see. I don't see any social media here. So I would actually add, since it's towards the bottom, you don't want to have any social media towards the top, but you would want to have it towards the bottom. So social share just means that they can share this page. If that's what you want, that's great. If you want them to follow you, you can add that social media call out. And instead of center, I'll put it left so it can be aligned with everything else that's left aligned. And I'm going to want it a solid color, matches the brand a bit better. And icon only, it's fine. You can change up the color style. Um, you can change up the text. I suggest you change it because it's not going to send them to your stuff if you don't. Um, for this, I suggest having your top uh, maybe two to three, no more than three social media accounts that you actually use. I know we, if for example, I have a Twitter account that I never really use. So I I wouldn't really put it there on that, especially on a landing page, as long as you're, if you're not gonna be using it that much. Um, and then having a link to um, your website, that would only work if you are using the landing page in addition to your website versus using it in, um, in place of your website. So that's pretty much how you create, let's save and close. Save and close. Okay, so this here, you're gonna wanna add a page title and it's going to be descriptive because it's what shows up here. So for example, why on websites, it's where I'm recording. Uh, this is the page and make sure nobody posted on there. Um, so this is where I'm recording. So all of these at the top here are the titles of those pages. So you you want yours to be an awesome title. So let's say this is a free download for uh, you know how to organize your house. You would say free um, free downloadable PDF to organize your house. Maybe something shorter than that, but. Um, that's what you would have there. Then here, URL, you can have your own domain name. 
Um, or you can go, you can get, take theirs, which would be, I would just say design. Yes. And then you would get that domain. That would be, that's your domain name now. So if you copy and paste this, it's not published yet. All right, well, we'll publish it soon. Um, okay, so we can have content. Um, this edit URL, you can use your own domain name. Um, you, it's a pay, paid feature, but if you're not ready and you won't be ready, let's say you won't be ready in three months to, to really, um, am I the only one that lost connection? Um, I am sorry if you lost connection. Let's see. Let me know if you can still see this. Um, okay, so, um, all right, going back to this. Uh, so you can use this automatically, the, the, uh, the domain name they give you. Um, I recommend that if you, I don't recommend printing it on a, um, getting it printed on a business card or a flyer or anything like that because it is a crazy, uh, crazy it's this and nobody's gonna want to type all that in but if you're okay with that then you're fine um, usually that is just used if you're sharing it on social media um, Instagram somewhere where people can just click and go to it versus having to type it in that's perfect um, let's see so that would work fine but if you are planning on using let's say you're doing your own website you know you're going to take a while and you want to use this to just get more email signups while you're building up your website then and you know it's going to be maybe three to six months for your website then i would consider doing something like this getting a domain um uh if usually if you have um this gmail is, is coming up because I signed up with my Gmail account, but let's say I purchased a something from GoDaddy with my domain name and an email address, which I recommend that you do because it makes you look more professional instead of showing a Gmail account. Um, if you have the funds for it, then you can get your, you can almost like adding your domain name onto MailChimp and then being able to use it there. Um, then you can get access to a, a, a regular domain name. Um, another way you can do it is that might help you shorten the link is bit.ly. I see clients that that's where they take their um, that their link and they actually shorten it even more. See, they sh it, it's a bit shorter. It's still hard to type it all in, um, but it's a bit shorter. And it's also you can if you have an account with bit.ly. Um, which I don't remember how to log into my account, but if you have one, you can edit this little portion. As long as it's not taken by anyone, you can edit it and then track the analytics on it. Um, that would make it a little bit easier for you to use this link um, if you don't have a domain name already. So let's see. So what we did, let me make sure, let's go back. All right, so, so far we have created a, it's kind of a mini landing page. It's really just a sign up page for your list. We've created this landing page. We titled it, created this URL, um, added the list to it, edited some content. Um, you can add your Google Analytics, face, Facebook Pixel if you're doing ads, um, anything like that. Then you can hit publish. And high five, you know, if you click on this dude here, he'll keep high fiving you. And then his hand will get red and he'll get angry. But so now you, it's, so that's what happens when, uh, when you high five the dude. Um, so that's what happens. So now you have your landing page, you have this link, you can share it um, with people. And let's refresh this. So here is the page. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see if I quickly did it. So let's see if I did it right. And email. 
So there is that message that, um, and then it's redirected to my, to my homepage. So if you remember that we did that, that's how it would work. So pretty much, so that works great if, for, if you have a thank you page. Um, let's go back in and see if I was added to the list. So now there are two subscribers, they are both me. Um, if you have any questions, put, put them, post them down there um, in the comments because uh, that will help me make sure that I'm tailoring the content that I'm providing to you. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much how you create. So just to recap, um, we went through, I've created this fresh um, MailChimp account right before you guys logged on. Um, I created a, it automatic, automatically created a list called design test. I was added to the list. Um, then you click on here, you go to sign up forms. We edited a sign up form and we got the link for that in case we wanted it. Um, so there's a sign up form. And you can also edit the unsubscribe page. There's a bunch of pages that you can edit um, on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. We made sure that our list was GDPR appropriate, so we went to settings, um, went down here. You, there's a bunch of cool settings, but just enable GDPR. You can enable reCAPTCHA too um, if you want to. Save that. Awesome, possum. Okay, then you go to the campaigns, and the the landing page is considered almost like a campaign. So you go in there, we created a campaign, you clicked on landing page, and then we have our page here. We can see all of our stuff, how many clicks we've gotten, how many subscribes we've gotten. Um, and once you get more information, you can see where they clicked and stuff like that, um, and your conversion rate, which is really important. Then let's see here, let's go back. Um, let's say I wanted to edit it. You can always go back in and edit your page. You, the only thing you can't edit is the URL and the list that it's going to, especially after people have started signing up. Uh, but you can edit the design and the title of the page. Let's see. Um, so yeah, let's say I use the wrong image here, then I want and I want to edit it. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we can do a background image change, anything like that. Uh, let me make sure I showed you how. Okay, so the background image. Uh, it's image, and you can set a, a different one. Let's do this one. So there goes another cool image. Um, yeah, you can put a background image on this one. So you can definitely change out how this the template looks. You're not stuck with, just because you picked the template, you're not stuck with it. You can ch definitely change it. Um, let's see. Tanya, this went too fast. I need step-by-step -step re review, so I will try at the replay. I'm not too technical. All right, well, I mean, can if you, Tanya, if you have um, specific questions, like I know we're, we have about 10 more minutes, um, but do you have one specific thing that I might have gone too fast on? Would it be whether that's you know, starting the account and setting it up or um, the setting up the sign up page. So because there is a sign up page and then there's a um, the landing page. So let me know and that way I can um, I can support you. Okay, all of it. All right, well, I can do a, a part two. Um, it'll probably be after holidays because it's starting to get a bit crazy, um, but I'll try to break this down into more um, specific items such as, you know, uh, the sign up page, how to like op quickly optimize the sign up page, and then um, the landing page. The most that you really have to remember, I don't know if you have a MailChimp account, but just play around with it. Um, if you have, if you're trying to start up a list so that I'm viewing on my phone, but reviewing on my PC. Okay, cool. Um, so if you're trying to start up a list, um, just create the list, um, go into the list and 
create a sign up form. That sign up form is going to one be easier on you if you're creating that page, and then two, it's it's just a nice entryway if instead of getting confused with a big page, you go to sign up forms form builder, um, and everything is editable the same way that the page is editable. It's just a little bit less um, intimidating. So here. Um, when you hover over it, you're under build it, you hover over it, um, and you can edit a headline, make sure your headline's catchy and short, same thing with description of the content, catchy and short. Um, let's see, don't ask for too much stuff. Malika, I'll leave any questions when I watch the replay, thank you again. Yeah, no problem. Um, thanks for watching. All right, so, um, you can add, so for example, if I want to check boxes, I add check boxes here um, to, my, to my page. So every time people go to this link, they're going to see this, um, this sign-up page. And this is a bit easier and less intimidating than what, a, what the landing page is. So if you want to start off here, this would be a, um, a lot better. And you can just start using it. So you take the link, I opened up a new tab, put the link in there, and it's simple. It's um, it's simplified, so it looks very much like a sign-up page, which is what it is. Um, it's not gonna have any really cool imagery. You can add imagery in the background. Um, there's a couple of other templates that you could use for the sign-up page, but really, it's going to look very, very simple, just like this, maybe background color, some text, and just, the fields to sign up. Start with that, and then once you're comfortable editing this, you'll you can go in to campaigns. And again, you go to create campaign. You click on the landing page. You name the campaign. Um, I named my design test freebie one, and um, clicked on the wrong thing. Let's see. Uh, edit. And then you should be able to um, start on the design of it. And again, they have really great templates. Um, and I can go over this again in January. So make sure you, for sure, if, while you're playing around with it, leave any any questions so that I can really tailor this again. I wanna make sure that you guys are getting awesome stuff out of this. So please, please leave any questions that you have. Um, you have five minutes. So yeah, I can, quickly kind of go through over everything is, you can hover over it, click on it, and edit it. Um, this is a form, so you can edit what the form would look like, style, settings. This is just text. You can definitely add more text boxes. Let's say I wanted another text box below here. Uh, save and close. These are all your little content items that you can do, that you can use. And so you can just say, hey, I want some more text here, maybe um, a disclaimer, disclaimer text. So um, you can have a disclaimer text. And let's make this, I don't know, it's four. No, it's not a disclaimer. You just play around with it, default text. Um, Make size smaller, um, font, you can change out the font. You can just play around with it. Um, so it'll, yeah, you can definitely play around with this. And it's the same, almost the same exact way as you would design an email, which I guess we would, should have to, should go over as well um, in another video. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, or just pop in every so often, put them in the Facebook group, um, and then we'll definitely, um, I'll definitely get to it and answer them. And it just really helps me a lot because I want to start doing uh, first monthly videos like these, but then I want to ramp them up a little bit more and see if I can do, you know, start doing bi-weekly and then, or sorry, every other week and then maybe a weekly video <laughs> in the, towards the um the end of 2019 so let me know i can only help you as much as i i don't know what you don't know so 
Um, and sometimes I don't know things and I'll admit to that. Um, and usually I Google them. So um, let me know and then I can do my very best to help you out. Um, yeah, so other than that, just save and publish. And then you have your, your link here to your to this page that you have a beautiful landing page for. You can share it on social media. It, it looks more like a web page versus a sign up form. And you can still track it. You can get a report on it. And you can add to your email list while you're building up your site. Um, that is pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you guys are. Uh, it'll be towards the middle to end of January when I do another video. And then if you are in Columbus, um, it'll, the first Wednesday of February is when we're going to have our first 2019 uh, wine and website. So make sure you grab your wine and, um, well, grab your wine for the video. We provide the wine for the uh, in-person wine and websites. Um, it'll be at the same location as always at Haven Collective. And yeah, I hope to chat with you guys soon.